Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cutefish OS, a Debian-based distribution that is quite simply elegant. It's beautiful and it's practical. It's easy to use. I do believe it's one of those operating systems that is going to make it easier for people that want to switch from Mac OS over to Linux just because of the familiarity it offers. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Cutefish OS. If you want to go check out their website, it's en.cutefishos.com. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. But when you come to their website, you've got home, download, about, forum, and you got this nice little looking make a better desktop OS. Focuses on simplicity, beauty, and practicality. And then you've got the download button where you can get the 0.6 beta download. Now, if you will notice, let me shrink this just a hair. You've got the global menu up top. You've got file, edit, view, history, tools, people, and help. A lot of people like using the global menu, especially those that are coming over from Mac OS. So that'll come in handy, and it's familiar to them. It makes things a little easier. So let's go ahead and maximize that back up. If you scroll down just a little bit, it says better user experience, simple and exquisite design. Use the most suitable design to enhance your user experience. And then Cutefish OS Applications. They've developed their own series of Cutefish OS applications to ensure that the user experience is unified across the user interface. I think that's very important going forward with Linux for the simple fact that people want to use a system that looks integrated. They want to use a system that looks like it belongs together. A lot of the issues that we have with people that want to come from Mac OS over to Linux is they say, man, everything just looks scrambled, it, you know. You download this app or you're using this app and they don't go together, especially if you're like using GTK apps inside of a KDE distribution. They just look different. Us being Linux users, it doesn't bother us as much, but I think finding a distribution that you can unify everything, if they go from the file manager to the video player, to the music player, to the camera, to the photos, whatever they might go to, and it just looks like every app belongs together, I think that makes things a lot easier. Let me know what you think. Do you agree, disagree? Put that in the comments below. Then you scroll down a little bit further. It says Cutefish Desktop is an efficient, beautiful, modern desktop. It's built using Qt Quick and some basic KDE frameworks. Then you come down. It lets you know about the global menu that I've already showed you. And then security and stability. It's based on open source Linux kernel. We know that. And then open source. Now, if you go back to the top, you've got download. You go to about. You click on about. And it's just got their contact information, support at cutefishos.com. And then you have their forum. And when that loads up, it's got some simple questions in here. How do I enable touchpad? How to uninstall a grub, LibreOffice, installation problem. I cannot install it. Mike not working on Chromium. Just your regular forum type questions. But you can come over here and get those questions answered and you'll be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Now, if you download Cutefish OS, throw it on a USB, or put it in a virtual machine and boot into it, this is the screen you're met with. It automatically opens up the installer. And because I'm in a virtual machine, you can see that I got some red flags here. There are no partitions to install. There's not enough drive space. And of course, the system is not plugged into a power source because I'm using a laptop. But that's what you'll be met with right there. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then there's your wallpaper right off the bat. Now, if you would like to change your wallpaper, you can. Let's right click. Let's go over here to change background. And those have loaded up. This is the one we presently have. You've got about uh, 12 wallpapers to choose from. I need to adjust the scroll speed on my mouse. I'm going to go ahead and pick something just a little darker. So I'll pick that. And it has changed. So we'll go ahead and move that back over there. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. As you can tell, we have one single panel up top. Over here, you've got date and time, battery, sound, and keyboard settings. And then over here, you've got desktop. Let's say you got more than one window open. You come over here, click desktop. It'll show it. And then down on the bottom, you do have a dock. You have an app launcher right here. If you click on that, it opens up all your apps. Then you've got file manager. Let's go ahead and take a look at the file manager. And if you come up top, we'll go to help and go about. This right here, they just call it 
file manager. This is Cutefish OS's own file manager that they've created to go along with their overall aesthetic and look of their operating system. You've got your usual suspects over here and you've got your home folders right here. You can change the look of those. You can switch it to list or you can leave it on icons. And then of course you can align them by name, date, type, size. That's really up to you. And then you do have your settings up here on the global menu that you could adjust as well. So it looks like just a quick, fast, clean little file manager that lets you get work done and stays out of your way. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down. You do have a terminal on the dock. Let's go ahead and open that up. And when you open it up, I just want to check real quick and see if they have HTOP installed. And they do not. Let's try top. And they do. Go ahead and maximize that so it's easier to see. I have issued this machine three gigabytes of RAM. At present, with just the terminal open, we are using about 816 megabytes. So we're looking at a mid-weight operating system. But with the beauty that you get and everything that's involved with that, you can expect it to run just a little heavier. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And as we saw a while ago, we have Chromium as our web browser. And then right here, you've got settings. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a few things before we go to settings. There's a calculator. And as you can see, it's got the same theme as everything else. And then your package installer. Now, when you go online, find a Debian package you want to use and download it. All you got to do is open up the file manager and wherever you might have downloaded that to, just like say open downloads, select the item, click it, hold it, drop it, drag it, and the package installer will install that for you. Pretty simple. If you're used to Debian or you've worked with any Debian packages before, it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got your screenshot tool. You just click on it, select the area you want to screenshot, and then check mark. And the picture has been saved to the clipboard. Then you can save it to pictures if you would choose. Attach it to an email, whatever you might want to do. So let's close out of that. Then your video player. As it opens up, you can tell that it's clean looking. Goes along with the aesthetic of the operating system. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now I want to come back over to settings. Let's open those up. Let's go ahead and maximize that. You've got WLAN. You've got Ethernet. Right now we're on a wired connection. I do recommend that if you are running this on a laptop if you're in a virtual machine just click over here shut that off and that won't be running in the background trying to find a wireless connection to attach to then you have your bluetooth and this is something new you now have proxy right in your networking connection settings you can go with no proxy or you can use manually specified proxy configuration this is new since their last release display you can come over here you can set you're scaling from 100% to 200. You can change the rotation if you're using more than one monitor and this is on the second monitor. You can click that to go vertical, adjust your resolution, and of course your refresh rate. Then we go to appearance. Right now we're on a light theme. If you wanted to take it to a dark theme, all you'd have to do is click on dark. It has now been changed to dark. Now if you minimize this, you can see the wallpaper in the background. If you would like your wallpaper to dim along with your dark theme, all you got to do is click that button right there and it will dim your wallpaper in the background. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that back up. Now, as you can tell, as we're looking around this operating system, we've got rounded corners up top and bottom and there's rounded corners on the dock that you have down here. What I have heard complaints of, especially with people using the Deepin OS or the Deepin Manjaro OS, is that their effects look really good except for the bottom bar. The bottom bar is not rounded off. It looks square and they don't like it. Well, with this, you don't have to worry about it. Everything looks smooth. It's aesthetically pleasing. I think, you know, at the end of the day, I probably like it a little bit more than Deepin for the simple fact that it looks a little lighter and it's not as cluttered. That's a personal preference. If you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. And then, of course, we're in dark mode. You can adjust your accent colors. You can go with that color, green, purple, pink, orange, if you would like to. And then, of course, a gray. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the blue because I think it stands out a little bit better for me. Then you've got fonts. Right now, you're set on Noto Sans. Fixed font is Deja Vu Sans. And then you've got a font size, small, medium, large, or huge. Now, if you wanted to bump that up to medium, just click on that. And you can see everything changes. Watch the fonts. Looks pretty good. It's got hintings on slight and then anti-aliasings on. Then we come to background. We saw that earlier when we changed the background image. Then we come to dock. 
styled. You can have it centered. Now, if you wanted to take up the full bottom part, all you got to do is click full. And as you can tell, you get that old school look. It's a little bigger. It's got on the bottom. If you wanted to move that to the right, you just click on right. And it would pop up over here. Or you can flip it to the left. So you do have those adjustments that make things a little easier. We can go ahead and put it back on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and center it. And then, of course, you can adjust the size of it. If you want it to be small, you can make it smaller or you can make it huge. That's your personal preference. You do what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on medium. Display mode. Always show, always hide, or smart hide. So if you click on smart hide, maximize this, it disappears. Let's go ahead and minimize that back down. And it pops back up. Okay. Now, if you want it to always hide, just click on always hide. It's gone unless you hover over it. I'm just going to leave it on always show. Next settings we've got. Let's go ahead and maximize that is user. Here you can set up all your information, put in an avatar if you would like, sound, analog output, microphone input, and then of course your mouse settings. Right now we're on add weta. If you wanted to change it to cute fish dark, you could just click on that. And as you can tell, the cursor has changed. Or you can go cute fish light. I'm going to leave it on that one. Then you've got date and time. You can auto sync it. If you wanted to go to 24 hour time, just click on that. And you can see the 24 hour time changes up here. And then, of course, you could change your time zone. Then you have languages. Right now, we're set on United States. You just come down here and pick whatever language you wanted. Battery, you're at 79%. And this just gives you basic information on battery life, how much more time you have till the battery is dead. Then you could also show percentage in the status bar if you wanted to. Click that on. And up here, it shows you 79% or click that off. Power. Here's where you can put it on performance or power save modes. This is completely up to you. If you put it on performance, it's going to use a lot more of your battery and your battery will drain quicker. And then power save, of course, is going to scale everything back a little bit. Some certain tasks will take a little longer to do because it's saving the power. Hibernate after screen is turned off. You can turn that on or off. Lock screen after screen is turned off. You can turn that on or off. Then we can come down to about. And it lets you know this is system version, Cutefish 0.6, system type, what kernel you're running. It's running 5.10.0-9. And then, of course, the RAM that's being used and internal storage. So I'm going to close out of the settings app. We will come down here to the app launcher, open that up. You've got an archive manager, calculator, Chromium web browser, document viewer, file manager, image viewer, video player, terminal. System monitor, let's check that out. It gives you the processes. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Take a peek at the resources. And over here, it'll show you the resources that are being used. I've only got two CPUs issued to this machine. Right now, it's using about 85% of those. So if I minimize this down just a hair, will that use less? And it does. It drops about 25%, even less than that. It's dropping down. Shows that we're using 1.1 gigabytes of memory. You're always going to show more in the system monitor than you do on a top or an H top. Let's go ahead and open that up and compare those real quick. Top, and it's using 868 megabytes. And over here, it's using 1.1. We are in a virtual machine, so some of this operating system is running in RAM, so that will affect those numbers. Go ahead and maximize that back up. And then it's got down here your networking and what it's sending and receiving. So let's close out of that. Let's go back over to the app launcher. You've got settings we looked at, your package installer we've already looked at, and then, of course, install your system. Well, that's a quick look at Cutefish OS. I really think once it gets out of beta and becomes a standard distribution that a lot of people that are on Mac that want to leave and come over to Linux, this is going to be their gateway for Linux. That's my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, put it in the comments below. Also, tell me what you think. Is this something you might download, throw in a USB put in a virtual machine and give it a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you go today. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.